if you go into uh, Azure build system and explore the pipelines, uh, there is a pipeline called my sample app pipeline already been defined for you to uh, execute this. And if you edit it, you can find that uh, I have defined a few build steps uh, that will go through the build process of the .NET Core application. Uh, copy the file into a staging directory, do some archiving, upload into S3 bucket, and then finally deploy uh, with code deploy to my donkey application. So let's try to explore different stages of this uh, build process and then see how we have constructed this pipeline. Uh, if you go into uh, your repositories, you should now see the changes that you have made. Hello world123 is here. So let's go into uh, my pipeline uh, and then check uh, how I have defined this pipeline. So let's edit this. The first step is to restore it. So what I did was I added a .NET Core uh, task. So I click this button and then add this .NET Core build test package or publisher one. So I added that and I got this one. So I added actually three of these uh, same tasks. And of course, uh, it's, it's the restoration one where I restore the, uh, the package related to this and I mark it as a restoration command for the .NET. Uh, parts is given in C-sharp approach file, which is the case uh, in our project. So you can find that I have this, uh, uh, my Udonkey app project file, which is a C-sharp project file. Uh, and then uh, I use a package from the Nougat dog, so because if it needs any Nougat packages. Then I added another step, uh, which is also the .NET Core, but in this case, I set the command as build so I now have all the uh, dependencies, but I'm now going to build it. I'm going to build all the uh, C-sharp projects. I pass the configuration as build configuration. So this is what, for example, when we build it using the command line, we pass configuration, build configuration. So we want to have a release build. So this build configuration is a parameter that I have defined under variables. So if you go into the variables, you can find that I have defined a build configuration called release and the build platform as any CPU. So if you go into the task, uh, I'm going to build it with the build configuration. In this case, I have set it up to release build. And there's no any advanced option, no uh, control option. These are all default values. Then I'm going to run any test. In this case, I don't have any test cases, but if I have any uh, test project, I can run them. Uh, in this case, we don't have any test cases. If you want, you can even remove this step. Then of course, I'm going to print some parameters into the screen. So that includes uh, built-in parameters like build source directory. So I know where these files get uh, copied in the build server. I'm also going to type some other parameters like build artifact staging directory. This is just to know like uh, what are the actual directories that this file get created when it get uh, built in a build machine. Just a PowerShell uh, line, uh, PowerShell command. Uh, what I did was I added uh, a PowerShell command. Uh, PowerShell this one. And I ran the PowerShell command uh, to uh, output this value with the help of write output uh, PowerShell command alert. Then I do some manipulation, copy files to a staging directory. So all what I'm doing here is I'm going to copy the files into a special folder structure so that it's acceptable by AWS Code Deploy. So for example, in AWS Code Deploy, the app spec file has to be in the root folder of the zip file. So I make sure that I copy the files in the right way uh, and I create a target folder in the build artifact staging directory. So this is a built-in variable. So AW, uh, Azure DevOps server has a concept called staging directory where you copy the files before staging them. So I use that staging directory uh, and then use it as a destination and inside that I have a folder called my donkey app. So, and then what I do is I archive this uh, staging, uh, archive this file 
uh, using a zip file archive. So the copy files to staging directory, I got it from a task. So if you add a file here, there's a task called copy file. Copy file, uh, so this is the task I added. It gives uh, you a method to copy the files. You can use this task or you can write a PowerShell script to copy from uh, build artifacts uh, location to the staging directory. But I use this task. Then I added a zip archive task. Uh, so in this case, what I did, I create a, a task and I look at the zip. You can find that there's a one called uh, archive files. So I, I use that task to archive the directory that I copied into the staging directory. So the staging directory is this one, my build artifact staging directory, my donkey app. Uh, archive type is zip. Archive file to create is the name of the file. I use some built-in variables like build ID number, build source version to create the file name. So then I can know exactly what's the name of the file uh, and then relate it to the execution of the build in my uh, Azure DevOps server. And I mark it as replace existing archive. If there's an archive, it will be replaced. Let's first try to execute uh, the task involving restoration up until the archiving. So the application get built and the content that of that build will end up in a zip file. So let's disable this S3 upload task. So select that and go to the control options and uncheck enable, so it's disabled and disable the AWS code deploy uh, task also. So go to uh, control options and mark it as disabled. So these are the only steps you are going to execute in the first run. So save your pipeline, save it. So these two tasks we won't get executed, but our zip archive should get created. So let's queue a new build. You can queue a new build from here itself. Uh, the agent pool has to be AWS build pool and then queue a new build. So you can click here to go to that new build. Alternatively, you can go to the builds and you can find the build is already running. Click this. So it's executing the build steps, connecting to the build agent. It's getting the source code from the uh, checkout. Uh, it's getting all the uh, dependencies from the Nougat repository, so the restoration execution is successful. It's done, and now it's executing the build, it's executed the test, um, and then it uh, copied the file, and it did the archiving of the zip file. So all the steps got executed correctly. So let's go and explore uh, what are the things that got uh, executed here. So I have this uh, PowerShell task called print server parameters. So if I explore here, you can find that uh, the built-in variable built-in source directory is this one. So this is in our build agent uh, in the build machine. Uh, and the build artifact staging directory is this one. And if I go into my uh, archive in one, copy file, you can find the uh, files it got copied uh, from the source uh, control download for location in the built agent, and it got copied into my staging directory. So that spec got copied, the two PowerShell script got copied into my uh, uh, staging directory, and my DL got copied, uh, and some JSON files also got copied. Uh, archiving file, if you go here, this is the archiving file that got created. So let's uh, explore whether this file exists and it's in the right order. So copy this file location and go to uh, your built machine. So I'm in my EC2 uh, uh, AWS console. So if you go into the EC2, uh, go to the running instances. So I my TFS is running here, but the build happened in this build machine. So uh, remote uh, desktop into that machine and then check whether the folder exists. 
So I'm in my uh, build machine. So if I go into uh, this folder um, and go into the C drive, uh, I copied this part from the uh, Azure Web Observer uh, output. For example, if you go into your archive staging directory location and then copy this path, go to your build machine and then paste it, you can find that the zip file has been created. You can find that the name of this zip file I have given is my donkey app underscore 2019 first 31 and the build number. The beauty of this one is that I can now relate which zip file got built with which build execution. So you can find that the build ID is uh, this one, uh, 2019.0.131.1. So if I go into my uh, Azure Web Observer, you can find that this is the execution and that execution ID is 2019.0.131.1. Dot one. So I can now relate which artifacts got built from which execution, and I can also relate the change set. So here you can find the change set is 36F85348, this ID, and it should be now related to the zip file. You can find that uh, I have given that uh, full ID here, 36F8553. So that's the uh, JIT commit. And I can now relate what's the content of that software to this package application. How we got those numbers and IDs into the file name is very simple. You can find in the archiving path, I use build, uh, build number and then build source version. So these built-in parameters are available for you to use with Azure Dew Observer. And if you want to know more built-in parameters, uh, please refer to the uh, documentation. So let's check whether this zip file in the right order. Copy it, paste it on your desktop maybe, extract all. So this file that I got created the folder structure has to be in a certain way. So you can find that the app spec is in the root folder, but not one level up. So it should be in the root level of the zip file. Otherwise, uh, the code deploy cannot find it. So the zip file got created correctly. 